guys and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith and today we are doing another exciting collaboration with K&A Custom Fabrics. Now if you haven't seen our, our recent video of the Mario bag, we did a Mario Game Boy um, out of vinyl uh, but we're doing it in a clear vinyl and this one's even more exciting because it, it has the same technique on how to put it together but there's a fun secret in the back. So let's talk about it. The clear vinyl is really great to work with, you guys. If you haven't tried K&A Custom Fabrics clear vinyl, you really should. But there are two cute, hopefully you can see them, the fire plants on the top for zippers. It is a very nice, roomy bag. And it's a pretty decent size. Um, I will post a picture here so you guys can see how large it is. On the side, we've added the D-ring again. I think a lot of people like having this for hand sanitizer, keys, things like that that you can hang it on the back. Um, and now I finally get to show you the exciting part on the back. So it straps out of the way. It's a cartridge. Uh, Alex and I were talking about it. She's like, you know, it would be really cool if there was a cartridge in the back. I'm like, all right, you design it. I will create it. There is a cartridge in the back so that you can have a little zip pocket pouch and you've got your little Mario on there and it looks like a, a one of the old cartridges that came with the uh, Game Boys and on the inside you've got your little it's hard to see you got your little bricks on the inside but there is a slip pocket in the back of this one um, it doesn't do that with the vinyl. It's the only one that does this is the clear. But you've got your little cartridge, put your little game in, and you're ready to go. So this was a fun sew for me. Um, we do use a little bit of binding, but I will say if you're having a hard time with binding, this is actually a great project to um, try and practice on because I found when I was putting the binding on, I could actually see through because it's clear vinyl, I could actually see through the vinyl and be able to see that my binding was actually um, meeting up with itself on both the front and the back. So it was really nice to be able to kind of practice binding with and that way you can kind of get used to doing binding and being able to see that it's going on the front and the back together. Anyway, so if you wanted to work on binding, this bag is perfect for you. So let's get started. All right guys, so we have got our brand new Mario book bag panel. When you receive your panel, it'll be rolled up like this so that, um, you know, it just, it doesn't get, we don't, we don't fold vinyl here. We roll it like you're supposed to. All right. So when you unroll it and lay it out, it's going to have some paper underneath of it. And that is there for several reasons, but it allows you to be able to see um, all of your pieces. You're going to need a couple of things for this project. One of those is some number five zipper tape. And then to go with that, KNAs has made these cute little zipper pulls, the little fire flowers. Um, you're going to need two, uh, actually you're going to need three of those. All right, with your outside panel, you also get an inside panel. And this is a little game cartridge um, that we designed to be like a little zipper pocket. And it's going, your game cartridge is, it's going to go inside of the back of the Game Boy just like you did the other thing. I can't wait for you guys to see this part. It's going to be so cute. All right. Let now, um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to interface um, this whole piece. I'm going to be using Pelon 950F. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to lay it out and interface the whole entire thing. And that way it'll just be easier to cut everything out. So, but first, we're going to cut this out. I left all of the pieces orientated the way that they were so that you can tell which pieces I'm getting because they're all clear. So um, I didn't want anybody getting confused about what they were grabbing up and what we're working on. Um, I went ahead and grabbed some of this green uh, waterproof canvas and I will leave a link down below um, from where I got it from but it goes pretty pretty well. It's not a perfect match but pretty well. Um, for my trim on different parts of my bag. Um, so I went ahead and I cut out a two inch, very long strip 
um, for our first thing we're going to be working on. The first thing we're going to grab is this little piece down here. Make sure that you can see it. Uh, so you've got like your back right here and the big body right here. To make sure that you're putting this the correct way, you want to lay this on your body making sure that it, it matches here. So the side that we're gonna be working on is the 11 wide side. All right, I decided to move down the table a little bit so that we can kind of see what we're doing. All right, so I took a piece of two by 11 inch piece of waterproof canvas. I have drawn a line down the center and then we are gonna add some double-sided tape to make this meet in the middle. I am using a half inch double sided tape. I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to take one side at a time and I am going to make that waterproof canvas meet in the middle. And this is going to be a chunky binding, but I just, I'd prefer working with that than a smaller binding and not being able to feel like I know what I'm doing. So you're going to put one side down meeting to the center and then we're going to take the other side and do the exact same thing. All right, then you can kind of take your hands and press it closed right down the center. All right, now we're gonna grab some quarter inch double-sided tape. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it towards the middle, I'll show you in just a second, towards the middle of our seam so that it's not in the middle of our seam and it's not right here where we're gonna be sewing. And that way we're not getting double-sided tape on top of double-sided tape on top of double-sided tape. So that's on one side. And the center line is like right there. Now I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to put another thing because this one side is going to go on one side of the clear vinyl and one side is going to go on the other side of the clear vinyl. You don't have to use the double sided tape if you don't want to. You could simply like just clip it on there and go. So they both should look like this. We're going to take one side off. Now I'm going to grab, making sure that I've got the 11 along side, and I'm going to put it towards the center, not quite in the center, just a little, enough space that this is going to fold over. You don't want to put it directly in the center, but just a smidgey smidge away from the center and then just press it down and then take the tape off the other side and fold it over. This is kind of like our binding to kind of keep that raw edge from like getting messed up. I am going to put a few clips in this just to hold it together until I get it to my sewing machine. And this is the first piece that we're going to work on. So let's go to the sewing machine. All right, I have got my stitch length at a four. Um, I believe I have an 18 needle in. And I've got a nice green that complements my waterproof canvas. I'm going to go down my waterproof canvas. Stop at the end, turn it around, go over about two stitches, I think. And then we're going to come right back down. Now that you've got your little slip pocket um, top binding done, the next thing that we're going to do 
is we're going to grab our back panel. It is going to be the panel that has nothing on it but looks like the front panel. We're going to match up the sides and the bottom. We are going to base stitch these together. When you face stitched it together, it'll look like this. They'll both be nice and together. You've got your little pocket. All right, so let's go base stitch this together. All right, so I have got my four stitch length and about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm just gonna be basting these two pieces together following the back panel lines because you have a little square cut out here. I'm gonna get you a little closer so you can see. So you see my square, we're gonna to need to follow that around. Now we're getting to this round part. You're going to need to sew around that round part, not, not the square. We're going to be following the round part all the way around. All right, so we've got our back piece and our slip pocket all finished. Next thing you're going to need to do is use your back piece as a guide and where your slip pocket is and it it's just straight out. You need to go ahead and cut that down so that it has the square. Both pieces has that square on the bottom and now both pieces need to have that round part at the bottom. Okay. Now that this is complete and put together, let's put this aside. We are going to grab our little D-ring slash strap things. <laughs> We're gonna grab those. Now, if we mark these and if we use double-sided tape and all of that is going to show up like a sore thumb. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to mark on the back side. You can kind of see where I cut on the outside of the lines. Hopefully you can see that on the back side. I'm gonna turn them over so you could see like the white lines now. Down the center lengthwise, I am going to measure one inch up. That's gonna be my center line. That is not gonna show up, hopefully. So on all of your pieces, measure an inch up. This glare on this table and this stuff is just terrible. Okay, so hopefully you can see that there is, in fact, a little marking right there. I know it's hard to see, but it's there. I can see it. All right, so instead of clipping this, instead of doing all the stuff that I would normally do, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine, and I'm going to fold down one side at a time, and I'm going to sew down at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I'm going to sew down this side, come around, and then sew down the other side, I'll show you in a second. All right, so I still have my stitches at a four length and I've got my little D ring piece. I am gonna fold one side over and I'm just gonna kind of press it with my fingers to the center, just like that. I don't wanna use tape because I'm afraid it's gonna show up. So I think what I'm gonna, if you wanna use tape, if that's easier for you, go for it. But I'm just gonna fold it over. And I am not going to back stitch. I know. Y'all can beat me later. Alright, now stop. Bring it around. Take this in right here and fold it over so that it meets the center. And I know you can't see a whole lot because my fingers are in the way, but when I'm done sewing the other one, I will show you. Uh -huh. 
So I'm just gonna come right back down the other side and hang on to your thread when you start sewing because if you don't, you might have a knot at this end and because everything is clear, it might show up. That's kind of another reason why I didn't back stitch because I didn't want to have that happen. I'm going to cut my tails a little longer because I am going to burn the ends very carefully. All right, so I've got my next one. I'm going to see that middle line. I'm just going to kind of press it with my fingers. And then I'll leave a little bit of space in between the two. All right, and then sew down. Stop. Bring it around, fold this other side over. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this so I can show you guys what it's going to look like. Hopefully you can see it. Now let's try to burn the thread ends just a little bit, stopping it before it gets all the way to the plastic because the plastic will, the plastic will melt and we don't want that. So I just burn the ends of my threads and I stop, I blew them out and then kind of smash them when they were um, where they, I wanted them to be. So you got one down, two more to go. I just feel like this is a lot better than using the tape because I'm pretty sure the tape was going to show. Even though, you know, it's clear, you're still going to kind of see the remnant from that. Burn your ends and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we're grabbing our back panel again and we're grabbing the two D-ring strips that we just made and then we're grabbing two one-inch D-rings. What we're going to do is on one side you're going to see kind of like that gray going down the center. That was our cut line and on the other side you're going to see like a white line. The white line is going to go on the outside. So we're going to put our D-ring on and you should see the gray lines like our cut lines and then fold it in half like that. You're going to do that to both of your D-rings. Then if you can see on the bag it kind of slopes and it, then it kind of goes straight and there's like a little angle right there hopefully you can see. You're going to measure about half an inch away from that where that junction is, where the round meets the straight line, about a half inch from there, you're going to place your D-ring. Then we're going to grab our other one with the cut lines facing me. I'm going to put my D-ring on there. Now, this one we're going to measure about an inch away from our edge cut line to where we're going to put our D-ring. And I can see my board underneath, or at least I can. All right, so I'm about an inch away from there. I'm gonna take these to the sewing machine and then I am just gonna base stitch these in place just like that. All right, so I just used a four stitch length and base stitched my D-rings on. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to finish up our back panel as far as our little squares are concerned. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your square and you square it up. Just like that. You're going to put uh, right side to right side and you're going to go just like that. What we're going to do is we're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. I back stitch one or two stitches and then I back stitch one or two stitches right here, but you don't want to put any more holes in this than you have to. Um, we're going to do that for all three sides, for all of our corners, so that we get 
our bag shape. I don't know if you guys can see it or not with it being clear, but like down at the corners, you can kind of see that it's going in and it has this round, rounding shape. That's what that is going to create. So let's go do that. Keeping my stitch length at a four, I'm gonna start down at the bottom and I'm going to put these sides together. We're gonna watch out for our D-ring. It's far enough over, I don't think you'll have to worry about it. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and we are hanging on to our tails. I'm gonna show you what I've been doing because um, we do need to burn the ends of our threads, um, but we, we gotta be careful. So let's sew this up, a couple of stitches forward, couple back, straight down, quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then when I take it out, I'm going to bring my thread back through. All right, and then just cut your strings as short as you normally do when you're going to burn them. And then I'm just going to I'm going to blow them out before they get back to the plastic because you don't want them to burn the plastic. And if you hold your strings when you're starting to sew, which I thought I was, but apparently not good enough, you should be able to pull your thread through. But even so, it's fine. All right, so I'm just going to start it and blow it out before it gets to my plastic because we don't want to melt that. So do that on all of the corners. So let's sew this one up. Alright, since we're already at our sewing machine and since we're already sewing quarters, we're going to go ahead and grab our front panel. We're not doing anything else to our front panel. We're just going to be taking the corners, putting them together just like we did the back panel, sewing down a quarter of an inch seam allowance on all three sides of your front panel. By the way, did you guys notice the on off button? I don't know why, but I'm obsessed with it. Alright, let's sew. <laughs> All right, so we've got the front all sewn up with all three corners. Where are you? Okay, there you are. We've got the back sewn up, all three corners ready to go. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do our straps. Now, normally, I would tell you guys to make a clip in the center. <sighs> we're gonna have to make a mark with like a marking pen to be able to figure out where to put our straps, but we'll get there in a second. I am going to use, this one is going to be for a child. Um, actually, I found that 40 inches is pretty good for an adult too. So, um, I'm going to suggest 40 inches for a child. If you want to do like 45 for an adult, um, that's what I'm going to do for somebody else for the other panel. Um, just whatever strap that you've ever used for a book bag that fits for you, that's the size that you need to do. So, I have got two one inch webbing. And then I have two one inch strap adjusters. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one at a time and I'm gonna take my webbing and put it through my strap adjuster on one side and then put it through on the other side. I'm gonna give myself like an inch, inch and a half right there because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little box right there to make sure that that um, strap adjuster stays there. So I'm just going to clip it until I take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to grab my other one inch wide webbing and I'm going to put that on my strap adjuster and then put that back through my strap adjuster and then again leaving myself like a one, one and a half inch tail and then we're going to go sew um, a box. We're just sewing a box and I am going to use the green thread that I've got too. So I went ahead and I sewed the straps down 
And I'm glad I used green because maybe you can actually see it now instead of using black on black and that way you can see it. All right, now that we've got this done, the next thing that we're going to do is with, we put the strap through the strap adjuster and then back over on this side so you can see the tail end of the strap adjuster here. We're going to keep it straight all the way down and we're going to put it through one of our D-rings. I'm going to pull it through all the way, all the way, keeping everything nice and straight. I'm going to put it through one side, the side that we see your tail end. We're going to put that through one side of our strap adjuster and then back down to the other side. If you want, you can make this bag just like we did the other Mario bag with all of the strap connectors and everything. It does not matter. You do you but I'm just going to keep the clear one kind of simple. All right, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the center of our back panel and I made an executive decision and I'm going to make a teeny, teeny, tiny little cut so that I can find the center of my bag. And then I'm going to lay this down on my table and I know you can't see it, but I can through the paper, is I'm going to find my center and then one inch over from my center, I'm going to put my first strap. Okay, I'm going to turn it back around grab my other strap, making sure that my strap end is right where I can see it, keeping it nice and straight. I'm going to go through my D-ring, pulling it straight through, not turning my thing at all. I'm coming back to the end tail, going up through the strap adjuster, and then back down again. And then I'm going to turn it back to myself. So I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to find that center mark and then one inch over I'm going to place my strap. Now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to base stitch one eighth away from the edge um, and that way they're just on there and they're not moving or going anywhere and I don't have to mess with anything else to do with the straps. All right, so I'm basting one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I still have a four uh, stitch length. I'm just basting them in there. So we have got both of our front and our back panels ready to go. They're all done. We don't have to do anything else to them. So we're going to take those and we're going to set those aside. Now we're going to grab our zipper gusset and we're going to work with that real quick. So I'm going to take my two zipper gussets that I have and I measured them out. Uh, I measured their length out and I cut more of my, my two inch strips and I measured them to the length of my zipper gusset. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna make a little slip thing just like I made for the slip pocket, the little cover. I'm gonna do that, the same exact thing. I'm gonna make a line down the center at the inch mark. Move it so that you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. Going right down the center. And I'm going to do that to both of these. We're going to go ahead and just work on both of them at the same time. And then I'm going to grab my half an inch double sided tape. And I'm going to go all the way down. Alright, now just like we did the other one, 
I'm going to take my tape off and I'm going to get the outside pieces. towards the center. Just like that. And then we're going to grab the other side and do the same thing. Now that that's done, I'm going to do the other one the same exact way. Now that that's done, I'm going to take our quarter of an inch. I'm going to take our quarter of an inch tape and do just like we did our last one. We're not putting it down the center. We're putting it a little bit above the center because you want this to be able to fold over on itself. And if the two double-sided tapes are on top of each other, it's not going to do that. And then one along the bottom. Like that. So that you have a little bit of space in between the two. And then I'm going to grab the bottom one. And take the tape off. And I'm going to center. Now the... Um, the clear vinyl is not going down the center. It's going a little bit away. It's following that double-sided tape all the way down. So it's not directly in the center, but following the double-sided tape. Now I'm going to take the other double-sided tape off. Oh, it's sticking to me. And I'm going to fold this over like that. And I'm going to clip it because I got to do the other side. Okay, so one of our zipper gussets is done. Let's do the other one. What we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew down this edge one eighth of an inch away from this edge on this side. We're not going to mess with this side, just this side right here. All right, I still have my stitch length at a four. And we are just going to sew right on the left side. Before we go any further, uh, we have got our binding onto our vinyl uh, for our zipper gusset. Before we go any further, we are going to have to make an adjustment. And this just happens sometimes when you're doing things new and different. We're going to take a half an inch off of each side of our zipper gusset. So I had to take the paper off of my desk so that I could actually do this. But I'm lining up from the edge, the outside edge, a half an inch. We're taking that half an inch off. I'm going to put this over here and then I've got my other one. I'm going to line it up with my board and then I'm going to do a half an inch just it's constructed a little differently than the original bag that we were using. And so I found that when I went to put the zipper gusset with the gusset, they weren't the same measurement. So now that that is done, we can move on. If you wanted to, you could cut down your 
zipper gusset when you were done putting it all together because this can get kind of shifty. <laughs> so if you want to wait till your zipper gusset is completely constructed, you can do that. But I measured mine and I know kind of what I need to do. All right. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab some quarter of an inch double sided tape. Sometimes stuff just happens and my brain doesn't work as good as I would like it to and I completely forgot that we were putting this together differently than we were putting the original Mario bag together. There was going to be a little give there so if you want to I would wait till the end when you're done and that way you can kind of measure your zipper gusset because everybody's seam allowance and everything is going to be a little different. I am going to try really hard to keep mine steady so that it measures the same width of my bottom gusset. Alright, now what we're going to do is we are going to take and each one of these are going to go on each side of our zipper like so. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take tape off the bottom and this is where I said things can get kind of shifty so if you wanted to wait to cut your corners that's or the edges that's probably the best idea for you. We're going to put the top of this binding onto the top of our double sided tape. So the top of our binding should line up with the top of our double sided tape. Then we're going to take the tape off the top and do the same thing. You don't want to see the double sided tape. Just like that. Okay. Now, now that that's done, it'll look like that on the back and then this on the front. Now what we're going to do is right on the edge, about an eighth of an inch from the edge, we're going to go ahead and sew down this side and sew down this side. I'll show you in a second. All right, now we are going to do the top zipper gusset. What I have got my stitches to a four length. I am going to be back stitching right here. Now you say, see that I'm just sewing right on the edge of this. paper being on the table is helping you guys or not. Let me know in the comments down below in case I do any more clear bags um, just so that I know if I need to leave the paper on or take it off and let you see it on my sewing table. All right now that we've got this done I've cut my half an inch on each side. I went ahead and took my bottom gusset and I put it to my zipper gusset just to see if they were the same size and they were. So if you want to wait till you get done sewing everything together and then cut it down to the measurement that your bottom gusset is, go for it. Um, half an inch would seem to be perfect for what I did. Again, it can get kind of wonky here. So um, whatever you find is the easiest for you, do that. All right, now. All right, so we have one more D-ring strap and a D-ring. So I'm going to put that on just like we did the last ones. You should see the cut lines facing you. I'm going to put that on like so and fold it over 
And then I'm going to take my bottom gusset and I'm going to put it in the center and clip it right there. We're going to base stitch this down and have that in the middle of our gusset like that. Now, before we get any further and before we forget and end up putting our gussets together and completely forget about these guys, <laughs> let's go ahead and put our zippers on, shall we? I know sometimes I just completely get busy in a project and completely forget that I need to actually put my zippers on. So, am I the only one that does that? I hope not, because I've seen your posts on Facebook, guys. <laughs> all right, we put it on, we brought it all the way down to the end, and then we um, opened up the bottom of our zipper. Left side first, then the right side. Your zipper teeth should be matching up at the top when you pull it through. Now we've got our zippers on our zipper gusset. Now, we can go base stitch this on. All right, my stitch length is still at a four. And we're just gonna base this an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And I don't know if I've mentioned it or not, but I have been burning the ends of my thread while doing this. Um, just for a little sanity's sake, I don't work with clear vinyl very often. If you guys have any tips down below, if um, burning, you don't have to burn your thread as much as you think. I just want, I want it to look really nice on the inside. And if, you know, thread starts to unravel or something, I don't want you to see it. So throughout the process, I have just been taking a couple of minutes and like being real picky. Obviously not burning my vinyl because that would be bad but um i just want it to look nice on the inside so if you burn the ends of your thread let me know in the comment section down below because i would like to know any tips that you have for me all right now i have got my zipper gusset and my bottom gusset i am going to go ahead and start attaching those um, together while I'm here at the sewing machine. I'm going to start on the end that has the D-ring just to make life easier on myself. Matching the edges together. All right, and then I'm going to go down this end and do the exact same thing, putting the ends together. I am still using a four stitch link. Now we're going to do this side. We do have the D-ring in here, so just keep that in mind. Go a little bit slower over that. Alright, so my battery died and I don't know where I left off, but I went ahead and burned the ends of my thread, and now I'm going to go ahead and top stitch across where my bottom gusset and my top gusset are meeting. Again, I have got four stitch length here and I'm just gonna kinda do like right down the center so that it'll lay nice and flat when I'm trying to go to put the rest of my bag together. You guys, we are almost at the home stretch. Okay. 
All right, so we have got our gusset done. We've got our back panel done, our front panel done. We're almost there. All right, we're gonna grab our front panel and we're going to put the front two corners together and we're gonna follow it all the way around and we are going to make the teeniest, tiniest little clip so that we can at least find the center. And then we're gonna take the two tops again and then follow this all the way down until you find the center. Make a tiny little clip. We already did one at the top of this one. So we're gonna put the back panels together. Follow it all the way down. And then make a little clip. Now we're gonna grab your gusset. We're going to make the centers come together and follow them down. We wanna find the center of the zipper gusset and the center of the bottom gusset. Those marks are gonna go on the top of our front panel and the top of our bottom, our back panel, and then the bottom gusset will go on the bottom of our bag. So I just made some teeny tiny little marks. And it's kind of nice that the vinyl kind of wants, wants to stick to itself anyway. Okay, now let's start with the back panel. I just think that's easier. Let's just go ahead and get that over with. Get that over with. <laughs> So fun. All right, so we're going to match up the center marks of our zipper and the center mark of our book bag. And I'm just going to make a couple of clips. Ah! Another one died. All right, it was, it was too much for her. I got, I got it. And again, it's really nice that the vinyl kind of want to stick to itself. It's really helpful. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to go down to the bottom, meeting up our clip in the bottom, and then clipping. and then just go all the way around and clip the whole bag together. Let's go sew this up. All right, stitches are still at a four length. I don't think we've changed them at all. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be sewing an eighth of an inch all the way around. And you'll see why just an eighth of an inch in just a minute. All right, so you have got your, your gusset attached to your back panel. If you don't want to do this step, I would sew at a quarter of an inch all the way around. But if you're going to do this step, I talked to the boss ladies and they said that, and agreed with me that I want to do green binding on the inside. I have done green binding for the zipper and for our little back panel here. I think it just needed the green binding on the inside just to kind of make things look cute on the inside. So I am going to be using a one inch by the length of my waterproof canvas. Y'all thought we were going to get through one project without me using waterproof canvas. You were incorrect. All right, I'm gonna start at the top. And I'm going to bind it all the way around. All 
All right, so we are still at a four stitch length. I am going to be sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge all the way around. Looking good. I did I did think it was really cool that while I was doing my binding that I could actually look through <laughs> the vinyl and make sure that my binding with the edges were all meeting together. I just I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, now we're gonna go ahead and put our front on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna start matching up both of our top notches and our bottom notches so that we can start getting this work we're, we're close to being done guys. All right, now we are going to essentially base stitch this together at one eighth of an inch. If you're not doing the binding, go ahead and do a quarter of an inch. If you're doing the binding, you want to do an eighth of an inch. All right, so we have sewn our eighth of an inch all the way around. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab a ton of clips and our binding and we're going to fold that under. Um, I folded this in half, clipped at an angle, fold this down, fold this in half, and then we're just going to go around and bind it. All right, still got our stitch length at a four. I am gonna be stitching a quarter of an inch in. All right, I thought it might be fun if you guys got to watch me ride the struggle bus, <laughs> trying to turn a bag inside out for once. So we're gonna grab the zippers. I've heard a lot of you guys commenting on Facebook about the vinyl being kind of um, hard to turn inside out and that you have to use a heat gun to do it and I have a feeling that you're I'm not going to need to do that. I've worked with Kim and Alex's vinyl a couple of times and it was really nice to be able to turn inside out. So we're going to see. Okay, so, so far so good, it's inside out. Straight out the corners. Okay, no heat gun needed guys. That's why they're the best, just saying. It could be the bag pattern, it is rather large. <laughs> A bigger bag to have to do this with. You're done. <laughs> Just kidding. We have to make the cartridge real quick. So let's do that. All right. So we are on to the very cute pouch. I just finished my one for TikTok and it's adorable. So we got to get there so I can show you how cute it is. All right. I went ahead and I interfaced this whole thing. I just took one sheet of interfacing and um, I used 950F Pellon. I just went ahead and interfaced everything. Now what we're going to do is write where the design and the white meets, we're gonna separate everything out. All right guys, we are at the home stretch. So, we got the last little bits that we need. We've got our two outside panels. These are gonna go, these uh, gray pieces are gonna go on the outside and the bricks are gonna be our lining. Next thing you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to get a six and a quarter zipper. 
I've got my cute little fire plant. <laughs> now, right now I have to make two two by two squares for my zipper tabs. Possibly in the future they will have them in the pattern. This is my bad. I completely forgot that we needed zipper tabs. Um, if if they update me before I edit this video and put it out, I will let you guys know. But as of right now, you will need a matching fabric or something that goes with it for your zipper tabs. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one 2x2 two two square. I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to fold it in on itself. Just like that. And I'm going to put one on this end and then do the same thing with the other end and sew these on. All right, so I have changed my stitch length to two and a half because we are doing some cotton fabric now. And I have folded my tab in on itself. I'm gonna put this one on the end of this one and then we're gonna sew it on. I still have my green thread in there. All right, now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold it in half. And then just kind of press with your fingers and then fold it in half again. And then you have your little uh, like binding tape. And then we're gonna. Well, I'm out of bobbin. Dang it. All right, so I got more bobbin. <laughs> And I got an update. There will be zipper tabs in the finalized pattern. Sorry about that. That was my bad. Uh, but you're going to go ahead and sew the zipper tabs on the end just like we did. And then we are going to grab the front flap. And we want the zipper to open from left to right. So I've got my zipper closed. And then you're just going to center it like this. And then we're just going to clip all the way across. And if you want, you can go ahead and baste stitch this down if you want, or you can just go ahead and we'll sew it. Um, I have got my bricks facing with the brick, the little question marks where I can see them. I'm going to put right side to right side. We're going to sew down a quarter of an inch. All right, now I am going to lengthen my stitches to a four because I normally when I top stitch, I like to do a four. All right, now we are going to grab our back, and this is the top of your back. I'm going to put it so we can see it. Match up the edges right here and the zipper tape at the top. Okay, then I am going to grab my other lining piece, and we're going to put that right sides together. Put your stitch length, or yeah, put your stitch length back to two and a half. Now we're going to open this up. And then I'm going to put my stitch length back at a four. All right, now we are going to open our zipper up. 
And we are going to put right side to right side together. And I always like starting at this end. And you use as many clips as you want. Our zipper tabs, zipper pulls, we're going to push down towards the lining. And I am going to put a clip right there so that stays down. All right, now I'm going to go to this side. Again, I'm going to push my zipper tape down towards my lining. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm just going to keep clipping all the way down. And then we are going to leave. We're going to have to turn this inside out. So you're on the very bottom of your lining, we're going to leave a space so that we can turn everything inside out. We're going to put our stitch length back at a two and a half. Okay. I forgot to tell you guys that I was using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Sorry. <laughs> it's getting late and the blood sugars are getting low. All right. On your main panel and on your lining, I am just clipping the corners like that so that it's a little easier um, to turn inside out. And it'll lay nice and flat because I did that. So now we're going to turn it inside out. It's going to be a little wrinkly, so you might have to like press it a little bit, um, but it's okay. Now, we're going to straighten out our lining, and we're going to have to close this up. Okay. So I folded it one side over a little, little over a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to get the other side to meet up. And then I am just going to stitch right across there to close everything up. Um, stitches are back at a two and a half. All right, now you're going to want to cut your threads and then I will show you what to do next. All right, now we're going to turn it inside out and put the lining on the inside. I'm just kind of putting my finger down into the corners and trying to get the lining to lay where it's supposed to go. And then you can just pick off all the threads. And your little zipper pouch is all done. Alright guys, so what did you think? I hope you guys like this bag. It was really enjoyable for me to be able to make it. Um, just because <laughs> that, was ex that was the exciting part. Me and Alex and Kim were all waiting to get to this part so that we could see the cartridge in the back. So anyway, we thought that was really cool. Um, the bag is really cool and unique in itself. You're not going to find anything like this anywhere else. If you visit k &A Custom Fabrics website, you can find it there. It's a really nice vinyl to work with. So if you haven't tried out their vinyl, you really should and this is a great bag to try it on because it's a larger bag and that you can be able to turn it inside out um, a little bit easier. 
If you make this bag, make sure that you go on K&A Custom Fabrics and show us your makes. Everybody always does their like own little tweaks to things. Um, you could change the color of the binding. You could change the hardware. Um, you can do all kinds of neat stuff because there are a lot of creative people out there and you guys are the best at being creative so make sure that you come on the page and show us your bags when you've made them because we really do love seeing how they turn out um, and seeing that you guys love your bags anyway I really enjoyed this sew and I hope you guys did too if you liked it you can give it a thumbs up or if you want to subscribe and see some of the other things that we've got coming out with K&A's um, we have a ton so much stuff at the end of the year coming up mid-July there's some really good stuff coming up. So make sure that you like their page if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe to the, the channel so that you don't miss any of the bags that I'll be doing uh, videos for them for. And if you have any questions, comments, something you weren't quite sure about, leave those in the comment section and I do check those daily. Thanks for joining us again on FaithWorks Designs. Bye guys.